I went from feeding my friends in my backyard to 5,000 people at the Rose Bowl. I saw some celebrity on Jay Leno give a shout out to Roy. He's like, oh, he's Korean barbecue tacos. And I was like, I was sitting on my couch and I was like, why did I think of that, you know? I was a 37 year old former executive chef. You know, I, I was in no way and no position to believe that I should be slanging tacos on the street. We were hypnotized by this flavor and every time I looked up, the lines got longer. So much longer that we had to open a second truck. This whole culture towards changing the way food was affecting people started to really sink its teeth into everything going on. Everybody has great barbecue, everybody has sausages, so why not put the uh, you know, two together? Went on the show, Food Truck Race, won that. Opened up my first brick and mortar. And I have Hanjip. I have a Colombian restaurant, I have a new Korean market, I have a Mexican restaurant. Uh, I've done this in six years. Living the American dream. This goes to show you don't have to be the smartest person in this world, but you, you know, you gotta hustle, you know? You gotta fight for what you, what you love and what you enjoy. Korean barbecue is so delicious. We want to get it out to the masses. The only way to do it is to bring it outside of K-Town. This dried squid, it's very traditional. People love it. So corn cheese is a very traditional Korean street food. Corn cheese is like the American version of pretzels. So I was thinking, you know, how can I kind of just elevate corn cheese? And I was like, well, bone marrow. Corn, butter, mayo, furikake, sugar, cheese, and the bone. People seem to love it. Vinny and I have more than a partnership. We have a brotherhood. When we moved out here to Southern California, we had $500, one phone and one car between two guys and no apartment. We had developed a belief at a very young age that as two young cooks, if we combined our income, we could actually live as one. And there was four years of time when Vinny and I shared every meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then once we did Animal, we knew that we had a lot of opportunity in front of us still, but it was gonna take a lot more work. We're big time developers. We will never ever just write a menu item and throw it on the menu that night. That's like totally against our book of rules. We want to develop the recipe, flush out the recipe, cost the recipe, et cetera. Typically, you know, it takes us five, six, eight, 10, 20 times before we feel like this is solid. And then we have to make sure that it fits into the menu mix. Price point, you know, we don't, we're not too heavy into one ingredient, anything along those lines. We look to have a little bit of time with our dishes when we put them on the menu. We look for something that's like citrus dish. Like citrus is really peaking right now. It'll be around for a few months. We put the dish on in the idea that it, that it won't change. The tandoori octopus was something that we put on four years ago, five years ago, and then brought it back this year. So it has like a 2.0 of it. We still stay very loyal to the design and branding of this restaurant, which has changed in modifications or politely declined. We tell people, hey, if you survive an animal for a year and you can work at every one of these positions, you can work in any restaurant, no questions, in this country and survive. The chefs from Animal were wonderful and their inspiration and how they got started and their continued growth. I've been with the ICCA for about 10 years and what I love about this group is just the culinary camaraderie, the exposure to the different chefs, the restaurants we get to visit. It's a lot of inspiration when we go back. The passion that we experienced from Roy Choi at the commissary, talking about his vision for that location and how he's tried to take what he can do and uh, make it come to life for that inner city neighborhood. Making food available for everybody. 